Do you own a hamster or just like to draw those chubby critters? Hey my friends, welcome back. My name is Giselle. If you're new to my channel and you don't know me, I'm an artist, I'm a doodler, I'm a virtual teacher, I'm a coach, and a YouTuber. On this channel, I do draw with me videos, inking, step-by-step -step videos, teaching tips, and more. In this video, we will draw those potato-shaped and quirky-eared critters, better known as the hamster. Everyone's hamster design will come out differently, but you can follow along with me. Let's get started. Here I'm drawing a circle with the top of a plastic container because, well, I have to admit, the circle wouldn't come out too evenly if I did it freehand. The circle doesn't have to be as big as mine. You can use a smaller top of an object to draw the circle. You can use a large top or even a square top of a box to make that shape. Now that you have that circle, let's begin by drawing the head first, which looks somewhat like the top of a pear, just a little bit broader. Make sure to make the bottom of the portion of the head wider because, as you know, some hamsters, or most hamsters, have plump cheeks due to stuffing food in them and hoarding their food. Then proceed to go below the head and draw the body, which is also the shape of the pear. You want to make the hip area or the bottom heavy because this is a chubby hamster we are creating here. I think the chunky hamsters look so adorable on paper. Now on to the hamster's arms, which are short, close to the lower part of the head, leaving a small space between the head and the arms. The hamster is raising its paws to the sky. The arms or the legs are stout, and the paw itself looks like a small half elongated circle. Draw very lightly to make it easier to erase once you finish inking your piece. Now on to the ears. Draw an oblong half circle going up and down to make the shape. They are close together but not too close together. And they look like mini radar dishes or upside down teardrops. Draw an edge on the side of the ear to make the ear have a bit of a 3D effect. Now put a line just above the cheeks to give you a guide where to place the eyes on this fluffy guy. I went back to the ears to rework them again, I know, and you can do that until you have the ears the way you want them to look. I also put a few strands of hairs on the top of its head between the hamster's ears as well. Here's the Artist Loft Circle Guide for making circles, squares, etc. to use for the eyes if you choose to use one. But I'm going to eyeball it and just draw the shapes. You can draw some eyebrows above the eyes themselves by drawing a half a circle to make the eyebrows. On to the small snout of this furry little puff of fur. Make a parenthesis on each side of the bottom half of the face. If you like this content, now is the time to click that like button. I'm going back to the eyes and drawing two little circles within the larger circle and shading the circle's end. Then I'm proceeding to draw a rounded edge diamond shape for the nose. Draw a short straight line under the nose. Sketch an upside down V below the line. Draw another upward circle for the mouth and two lines drawing upwards for the mouth to give it a little smile for this little fluffy potato. I'm going around the outside of the hamster's head and darkening the lines ever so slightly. Go on to the body and draw another pear shape within the shape of the body you previously drew on this character to create the underbelly of the hamster. I erased some of the fur on the hamster's head because I didn't like the way it looked before. You can do the same if you choose. Your pencil is your guide before you start inking. I wanted to make the cheeks a little bit chubbier and extend the lower part of its face. 
As you can see, I kept reworking the fur on his head, his mouth, and made his nose into an upside down U. I erased the line under the chin and left the lines on the sides of the face. You can draw some of the fur on the sides of the hamster's head. Just draw a few strands of fur as if there was wind blowing on the fur. Don't draw the lines too straight or stiff because you want the hair to flow naturally even though this is not a real hamster. Do the same on the underbelly or the hamster's body. Remember you can always slow down the video to see how I'm pulling the lines to draw the fur on this hamster. Keep on reworking the lines very lightly until you are satisfied with your hamster. As you can see, I was doing that. So I reworked the nose, the mouth, the cheeks, and so I moved them a little higher and proceeded to make the mouth a little smaller. You can also do the same if you'd like. You don't really have to change yours. This is why I also start my doodles with pencil. Majority of the time, I tend to get an idea in my head and I just start drawing. I don't do any thumbnails. I know, I'm bad. But anyway, I digress. Here I drew some little fluffy lines by the ears and the forehead to add some character to this little hamster. Now let's add a wavy line above the hamster's head for those dangly lights, which the hamster is trying to reach. When I drew the back paws of the hamster, I didn't know I was off camera, sorry guys. When you do draw the lower paws, make sure you draw them wider towards the front of the paw and tapered towards the back of the paw. On the right side of the screen, I'm drawing a pear shape to demonstrate how the body shape should be for this hamster. Now on to the dangly light bulbs. Draw a small circle for the top of the light, two lines on each side to form a short stem and draw some circular lines within the stem. And go along and draw another pear shape to make the light bulb. Then draw a line going through the center from the top, but not quite reaching the bottom of the bulb to form the filament. I decided to draw small little circles to also add some sort of decoration to the wavy line. You can also add those little circles if you choose. If you don't want to add little circles, it's up to you. I also added some curly tendrils on the top of each corner of the wavy line. You can also do that if you'd like, or you can just add the wavy line without tendrils at all or curls. I'm drawing three small little circles on either side of the hamster's body to create some blueberries. Now I'm drawing a few botanical leaves on either side of the inner edge of the circle. Don't put the leaves too close to each other as you ascend the stem. I'm redrawing the circles to make the blueberries a little bit bigger. You don't really have to make the berries a little bit bigger, but I decided to make the berries a tiny bit bigger. Let's draw a few leaves to the left peeking out of the top of the berry. You can use a kneaded eraser as well, which avoids eraser dust. Draw another leaf at the bottom of the berry as well to give the berry some character. Now let's go on to drawing the middle of the berry. Draw a small circle within each circle and create what looks like a pointed edge flower in the center of each berry. I drew the berries freehand because the berries aren't perfectly round, but I'm showing you this artist loft guide 
in case you decide to use it to make the circles of the berries. Let's continue to draw a few leaves on the right side stack of berries. Now that you have your layout and pencil work done, let's proceed to ink this little doodle. Make sure you are happy with your pencil drawing before you start inking. I'm using a regular fountain pen for this doodle. Make sure if you are a lefty or even if you are a righty, make sure that you put a piece of paper underneath your hand so you won't smudge your doodle or your artwork. Now I think it's time for a positive note. I will give you a quote from St. Thomas Aquinas. There is nothing on this earth more to be prized than true friendship. Please stay till the end. Sit back and enjoy a cup of tea or a coffee while you watch me ink in the drawing and lightly color in the blueberries. Remember, you can always use a white gel pen to correct those little bitty mistakes that you make with your pen. Here I'm putting in a little pencil shading under the hamster's paws. Now you can darken the shading, but I chose not to do it on this doodle. I'm using Stedler colored pencils, which are a cheaper alternative to colored pencils. I can't tell you the colors because the pencils didn't have a name of the color on the pencil itself. I did put a number on each pencil when I colored swatch them. I'm using a red pencil to give the hamster a little color on his cheeks and snout. You can always use a marker or a different brand of colored pencil to give the painting more color. I used white gel pen to cover up my mistakes and to add a little bit of highlights to the hamster's eyes. Don't forget to sign your artwork. If you enjoyed watching this video and would like to see more videos like this one, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on any future videos. God bless and thank you for sharing 
a piece of your day with me. Bye-bye. See you next time.